The next question is a little bit deeper and a little bit more existential in a lot of ways. It's something that I have dealt with in the past and it's how do I get a more positive attitude or outlook? And it's a tough one because it's not something that I'm preaching out. It's not something that I find particularly accessible to everyone. And just being an overly positive person isn't... It sounds exhausting. That's I'm more positive than I'm negative, that's for sure, but I couldn't be positive all the time. I used to be someone that was much more negative about everything. I couldn't take a compliment. I'd just be slapping people in the face that would try and give me one. They'd be like, oh, that was a really good job that you did, Richard. And I said, that was a terrible job. And therefore your opinion's garbage and you should feel bad for trying to make me feel better. That's just a kind of very toxic thing and it would be the case all the time. I just couldn't see a positive outlook. Obviously not clinical depression, anything like that. I'm not talking about that. That needs professional help. If you're clinically depressed, please go and see someone. Going and seeing a mental health professional was one of the best things that I could ever do. And it set me up for life in a lot of ways when I was crashing at my worst. So please always see a professional. Now this is much more sort of micro level. When I saw myself and the kind of impact that I had on the people around me and the people that I loved, I thought that I was being this kind of mood vacuum. Sucking up people's energy around you because I've tried to get rid of those people in my life. Because if you're spending time with someone and you come out feeling worse than when you went to see them, then that person, if that happens every time, there's someone that's just sucking away your energy. I just don't want those people taking away my energy anymore. And so if I was doing that to people in my life, I needed to make sure that I wasn't one of those people as well. And I'm sure I have been in the past. And that's probably why I lost some friends. At first, it was this fake it till you make it attitude. You see that? And I think that's kind of a bogus dodgy attitude to have most of the time, but for somehow, for some reason, it worked in this case. It's give the kind of responses and have the kind of outlook or sort of outward expression that you would want to see in other people. In my case, I just wanted someone that was able to take compliments and when thinking about the next six months, not just go into a pit of despair. It was all just about someone saying something to me, smashing a smile out, absolutely just punching positive energy right into their face. Even if I didn't feel it inside, it was really tiring at first. But then it just became much more habitual after that. That's not something I can definitely suggest and assume that will work for anyone because that's, it just sounds kind of very abstract and stupid. It just became about putting things in my life that actually elicited those responses, just finding the happiness, saying that not necessarily the next five years, I'm not going to necessarily hit all of my goals. I just want to create a pathway that really just leads me to specific points that make me happy. So I'm just going to create a pathway along the way. There'll be signposts, which are happiness. And then where I end up at the end of that, it doesn't really matter. A lot of the reasons that brought me here to Japan were just about finding happiness. I knew that things like career and those things I tried and I tried, it just, they weren't making me happy. So I just needed to do something that made me happy and then everything else just kind of will flow from there. It's a very abstract, airy fairy. Ooh, look at Richard, what an absolute poncy dildo. Yeah, finding the happiness, finding reasons to be happy just makes you more positive. People, I like positive people. I have positive people in my life. I'm a positive person and people probably think I'm insufferable. This is a kind of condescending and strange question, so I might just try and rephrase it. But the question, how do I get my significant other to apologize more? Whee! So it's not about making sure that they apologize more, it's about understanding why they might not be apologizing 
and recognizing some things in yourself as well. Maybe the fact that they're not apologizing is because they generally don't think they're doing anything wrong. So you need to establish what your parameters are for what's right and what's wrong, especially in regards to your beliefs. Secondly, they also just might be someone that it could be a pride thing, which means oof, that's a difficult thing to overcome. If it's an arrogance thing, then try and stay away from that person. But it might just be something more to do with like personal confidence. Like someone might feel very sorry for something, but there's just something inherently difficult about saying sorry in that case. So there just needs to be a comfortable environment created in order to apologize and feel comfortable apologizing at any moment. Even just saying, I'm sorry to create a dialogue and try and even say, look, this is where I felt that I did wrong, but this is my impression of what was happening in the situation. Try only to use statements about yourself in those situations. Try not to say, you did this wrong, you should be apologizing for that. No, no, it's more just about creating that environment that makes it everyone feel comfortable and safe to apologize because apologizing can be an inherently difficult thing to do especially even if you're just if you're a shy person that it's a very difficult thing to come across it, you might just be someone that's quite competitive if you're a competitive person a feeling like culpable may feel like a sign of failure just try and alleviate those concerns for people say that it's, it's there's no weakness it, there's nothing inherently wrong if there's some if it's a significant other, there should be trust and love anyway. So it should just be a simple matter of, I'm sorry, this is what happened, this is what I was feeling, etc. But it's a difficult thing. Don't worry too much if it's not coming easy. And maybe it's just not something that you're really that interested in anyway.